Greetings everyone, I'm Farouk Langdana, a professor at Rutgers Business School and I'm the director of the Rutgers Executive MBA program known as The Powerhouse. So today in this not too long video, we're going to talk about three kinds of inflation. The two that we had immediately after COVID and one that we are worried about in the years looking ahead, late 24, 25, 26. So, all in plain English, no terrible economics diagrams, no supply and demand curves this time, very unusual for me. So all in plain English, three kinds of inflation. So here in the United States, inflation had basically vanished since 1981, when a Fed chairman called Paul Volcker essentially shut down inflation and we didn't have inflation. It was not here till 2022 when it came roaring back. And so this is a relatively recent phenomenon for people who are in their 40s or younger, essentially. So three kinds of inflation, let me quickly talk about them and then we'll go back to the real world and look ahead too. The first kind of inflation is the good kind, all right? It's typically known as demand pull inflation and this is the inflation we saw as we burst forth out of COVID. So in this good kind of inflation, demand pull inflation, this is essentially caused by a sudden increase in demand. Confidence is high, people are doing revenge eating at diners, revenge traveling after COVID, buying stuff, buying houses, appliances, suddenly there's an explosion of purchasing and euphoria and that pushes demand up. When everyone starts bidding for everything, the prices of those things go up. And an inflation simply means an increase in the average price level. And so when demand pull inflation happens, it actually boosts jobs. More people going back to work at restaurants, more people coming back to work on cruise lines, in hotels, in appliance stores, you know, hospitality. So prices go up, but jobs also go up. The economy also kind of gets boosted. And so this kind of inflation where prices go up, jobs go up, the economy goes up, that's called demand pull inflation and it's known as the good kind. And of course, too much of anything, no matter how good, is bad. So when that inflation gets too much, when you run out of good people for jobs, when all the cruise lines are packed, the lines outside every diner, uh, you're running out of lithium, running out of nickel, cobalt, rare elements, that's called an overheated economy and you need to bring it back down. But for now, demand pull inflation is good. In the early stages, it's correlated positively with jobs and output. There's another kind of inflation, which is obviously now the bad kind, and that's cost push inflation. It's also called commodity inflation. And this is the inflation that comes from outside. It doesn't come from euphoric domestic residents doing revenge traveling and all that sort of thing. This is an oil crisis. Something happens in the Straits of Hormuz and the oil supply is blocked. Russia invades Ukraine and suddenly you got food supply chains torn to pieces. You were oil supply chains torn to pieces. You have flooding, you have frost, you have bad weather. Citrus crop is destroyed, um, grain is destroyed, chickens fall sick, hens fall sick, you know, avian flu. And of course, the granddaddy of these shocks, COVID. So in this case, when there's a shortage, prices go up. Um, suddenly, avian flu, fewer eggs. What happens now? People start, the supply of eggs is low. Demanders bid up the price. Oh, I'm running a five-star hotel. I gotta have eggs for breakfast for my high-paying consumers. I'll pay more. Oh, I'm supplying eggs to the Rutgers Executive MBA program on Saturdays and Sundays. They need eggs, I'll pay more. And so the bidding wars begin and prices go up. Oh, we need to travel. I need to supply trucks, Amazon, supply chain. We'll pay more for gasoline. And so cost push inflation caused by scarcity, shocks hitting the economy from outside, is the bad kind because this is not correlated 
with more jobs, more output. Nothing good comes out of this. And there's not much we can do about it, you know. It's about a, uh, something in the Gulf, something to do with weather, Vladimir Putin misbehaving again. And of course, the granddaddy of these shocks was COVID. And typically in cost-push inflation, it lasts a short while. The, the, typically, cost-push inflation is finite. The, what's, the, the blockage in the Gulf unravels, and again, oil starts flowing. The food shock, the rains finally come, monsoon comes, monsoon doesn't, good things happen eventually, and shocks unravel. Um, so semiconductors again start happening after COVID, and again, production starts ramping up after that shock. However, the COVID shock was long. That was a long cost push shock that lasted forever. And so that was a new one. That was the granddaddy of cost push inflation, the bad kind. And what happened to us after COVID is we got both. Right as we thought we were coming out of COVID, we had demand pull inflation, hey, COVID's over. Hey, I wanna go on cruise to the Bahamas or to, um, the Inland Passage, I want to go out and eat. We haven't been out to eat for two years, three years, whatever. So that we had demand pull, the good kind. And then we also had cost push. Right about at that time, we again had a semiconductor problem, supply chains, you know, COVID hadn't really gone away. So it kind of came back. And then Vladimir Putin does his Ukraine thing. Um, and so we had food shocks food disruptions in the food supply chain, oil disruptions in the oil supply chain. So we had both the good kind and the demand pull and the bad kind, cost push. Now, cost push, there's not much you can do about, but demand pull, you can bring it down. If you're overheating, you push interest rates up, you squish back demand. And so we did that. You know, we went from 9.4, 9.5% inflation in mid 2022 to now 3% inflation, which is remarkable by uh, mid 2024. And now we're looking ahead. So we soft landed the economy by raising interest rates 11 times. That's how you calm down runaway demand pull inflation, you know, from calm down the overheating. And the cost push, the semiconductors shocks are gone. The food's flowing again. Um, Putin, unfortunately, is still behaving badly in Ukraine, but COVID shocks have pretty much burnt off in the supply chain. So both of the demand pull and cost push have abated. Looking forward, folks, the third kind of inflation is actually the most serious kind, and that's caused by budget deficits that become too large. So when Uncle Sam or any government spends a lot more than what it brings in tax money, that's a budget deficit. And it's funded by borrowing. And anytime you have a CD, anytime you have a checking account that pays interest, you actually are lending to Uncle Sam or whichever government pertains to you. But you can't, the government can't keep borrowing forever. You know, and um, once the deficit, the budget deficit is more than 5% of the GDP, or the deficit is more than 5% of the size of the national pie, it's known as a non-sustainable deficit, which means that you can't keep borrowing. People can only lend to Uncle Sam for that long. And it's not just domestic residents, it's China. China is one of the, China and Japan are two of the biggest lenders to Uncle Sam in terms of lending to the treasury. And so once the deficits get too big, foreign money and domestic money slows down. Like, you know, we're lending to Uncle Sam or whichever government, how will you pay me back? It's too big. We are here at 7% of GDP now, which is where we are in this country. Oh, I don't know. We're not going to send more money and lend Uncle Sam the Treasury. And so the government has to print money because it can't borrow as much. So you know where I'm going with this? So you, it's called monetization of the deficit. So you print money and you print more money and you print more money. And what happens simply is, let's say I got an iPhone in my hand and it's worth 700 bucks. It's the Langdana iPhone. And you, 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 and you want to buy this phone. And you have thousand bucks, thousand bucks, thousand bucks, thousand bucks in your 
purses, wallets, whatever. Now the government's printing money and all kinds of green pieces of paper are flying all over the place. So now you have 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000 using an extreme example here, of course, uh, in your purses and wallets thanks to this monetization. Again, here I am, the Langdana phone, and now you're going to say, hey, I really need it. I'm going to pay 800. She's going to say, you know what? I'm going to pay 1500. I'm going to pay 2000, 2500, because they've, everyone's got buckets of money now. And so long story short, when you print money, monetize, to pay a deficit that's too big, non-sustainable, which can't be funded by borrowing, that's dangerous. And that kind of inflation is an, a large and underlying, it's a structural inflation that's, that's hard. That's hard to tame because you can't really turn off a tap. You have, you have to decrease government spending. That's the root cause of this. And you see, that's a tough one. No matter who's going to be president here, that means cutting back entitlements. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Those are hot potatoes, lightning rods for all kinds of criticism. You can't cut defense anymore. It, whatever I say, someone's going to get bent out of shape right now. <laughs> the bottom line is you have to cut government spending. And that's hard to do. And it's not just the spending. You have to cut department of this, the bureaucracy there, department of that. You know, these are bureaucratic jobs which also go hand in hand with this kind of spending. So this is a tough one. And whoever becomes president next is uh, government spending includes subsidies, electric vehicles, trillions, billions, electric vehicle batteries, green energy, all the subsidies, not just here, in Japan, same thing, South Korea, India, China, they're all subsidizing pretty much the same three or four so-called champion industries. And so that's going to be the next issue, this third kind of inflation, which is going to be tougher to tame. So we've talked about three kinds, demand pull, the good kind, but then too much of it, you have to bring it back down. That's called overheating and soft landing. The bad kind, cost push inflation, caused by supply, skip shocks, scarcity, basically. And then the third one, which we're looking forward at in 25, 26 maybe, caused by non-sustainable deficits, or simply deficits that are, have reached a point where they can't completely be funded by borrowing. So there you have it, an unusual event, a Langdana video lecture without any diagrams, only English. So thank you for being with us for the last few minutes. And signing off from the Rutgers Business School Executive MBA program, the powerhouse, this is Farouk Langdana. Thank you, everyone.